Okay, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I got people waiting. I don't like keeping people waiting, so I'm going to start the live stream a few minutes early. Normally, I started at 7 p.m., but I got three people hanging out, waiting on me, so I don't want you to wait, okay? So, you know, I'm getting... I'm Diego. This is if this is your first time on the channel. I'm waiting for my K-1 visa to get adjudicated for my beautiful Karina, my Prometita. She lives in Bogota, Colombia, but uh, she's originally from Caracas, Venezuela. And I live here in Pensacola, near Pensacola, not in Pensacola, uh, in Santa Rosa County, north of Navarre Beach, in the panhandle of hot and sweaty Florida, where we get hurricanes all the time. I'm getting sick of hurricanes, but that's okay. It's my choice to live here. And uh, the, the, the National Visa Center has started sending out their bogus emails again to our friends in Colombia who are waiting for K-1 visa adjudication at the embassy in Bogota. They're saying that the embassy is closed because of COVID, which isn't true. The embassy is not closed. It's open. So Karina is going to call tomorrow. She's going to call the embassy tomorrow and talk to the immigration folks. You know, I'm sick of the NVC. The National Visa Center, ladies and gentlemen, they got to be retrained and, and or something. Tina says, hello. What's going on, Tina? And Jin Ganesh, hi, Diego. What's going on, Jin? And Contain This says, we just got our in transit. Okay, after 91 days. So that's great news. Contain This. Uh, which embassy would that be? Which country? I can't remember. Where are you going? With Where, where is your beneficiary? 91 days is about average, 90 days. <clears throat> uh, life is just for living. I'm not hearing you, Diego. Nope. Can you hear me, folks? Mr. Nahas, hi, Diego. Good evening. So life is just for living says, I cannot hear you. So... What? Can you hear me, guys? Let me know how is the sound quality. Is it me or is it you two? What is the problem? Contain this, Manila. That's right. So you're on the way. You're on the way. You're almost there. Contain this. And Mr. Nahas, we can hear you. Okay, guys. Okay, Tina. Okay. It must be your audio, Estef Estefania Flores. Well, I don't know. I got this big old microphone thing of a jigger here. But, you know, I never use it. I don't use it. I mean, have you seen every YouTube channel? Everybody's speaking into one of these big things right here. Right? Don't you remember, Don't you see that? I don't. I got one, but I don't use it. Uh, Tina, yes, hear you just fine. Life is just for living. Hi, Diego. I went off and came back and hearing you now. Okay, so the connection for you is good. That's great. So I had to set the National Visa Center straight. And I sent an email to the U.S. Embassy in Bogota, Colombia. And I said, are you guys closed because of COVID? Don't tell me a story, Mr. Embassy, okay? Don't tell me a story. Because Karina and I, we have an apartment just down the road from the embassy. And we can jump on a bus. Well, she can. I'm in Florida. And we can find out what's going on with the embassy. So if you have an immigration uh, visa process going on in Colombia, relax. They're going to process your visa. They probably backlogged with work. Uh, Ken Thompson, hello, Diego. NOA 1, August 1st, 2021. NOA 2, August 7th. Welcome letter, September 11th, now in transit to Dubai. Well, that's great news, Dubai. Very good. Now, Ken, the medical exam in Dubai is kind of expensive. Okay, so you're going to have to talk to your beneficiary and prepare her for a big bill for her medical exam in Dubai. Now, I know a lot about all the embassies all around the world. I got my finger on the pulse of just about every embassy. And I know that the Dubai embassy is expensive. Not the, not the embassy, but the doctor. Uh, but that's good news. Janiella James, hey, Diego, I have got good news. My fiancé visa was issued. Well, high five. Salute. Janiella James, congratulations. That's good news. Excellent. Now you got to get on a plane and get to the United States. Now, remember, 
when you go through the, the immigration checkpoint, you can go, if you're traveling with your sponsor, you can uh, go through the U.S. Uh, citizenship line. Okay, you can go through the U.S. citizenship line. Don't get separated. Lots of people, okay, lots of people, they land and there says uh, immigrants this way, green card holders this way, U.S. citizens this way, and then, and then the sponsor and the beneficiary, they split up. Don't do that. You can, Mr. Beneficiary, you can travel. You can walk with your sponsor to the U.S. citizenship line, okay, if you're on a K-1 visa. Uh, Teja Sweeney, is there a limit to see the CGI portal? What is Teja Sweeney? What is the CGI portal? What is that? Is that on the holodeck of the Star Trek Enterprise? I don't know. What is CGI portal? What is that? Is that some science fiction thing? I don't know. You're talking about the visa portal at the on the on the website. I think the embassies control that per country. And I, you know, it depends on the country. Harold A, how is it take? How long is it taking for K-1 visa in Colombia? Average time? Uh, 18, 19 months from NOA-1 to visa and passport. About 19 months is the average. Oh, for the visa slots, Teja Sweeney, yeah. Is there a limit? I don't know. Depends on the embassy. Some, like some embassies put a limit on how many times you can look. And in some embassies, they, they don't have a limit. You know, every ambassador runs his or her embassy the way he or she wants. You know, some are user friendly, some are horrible. You know, it depends on the, visa, on the embassy. So I don't know. But I do know that uh, in uh, Bangkok, Thailand, you cannot take your sponsor. Your sponsor cannot go with you to the visa interview in Thailand. Okay. And... Uh, Lozan Alashi, I typed my question part twice, but you didn't read it. Where's the question? It didn't show up. Lozan Alashi, write it again. I don't see it. It's not here. Life is just for living. Here's our story, Diego. NOA, NOA 1, June 15, 2022, RFE. Okay, June 22nd, 2023, approval, July 28th. On your birthday. Well, good. Congratulations for that. You'll never forget that day for your visa, right? Yesterday, my fiance got the welcome letter in his email, and we were in transit and ready status today. Okay, so you got to get on it and start processing your visa. Get her done. Yeah, Harold A, 19 months is average for Colombia. You know, like in July, they shut down the embassy because they were busy. You know, they were busy at the embassy in July. So they wouldn't take any K-1 visas in July. So they got backlogged up. So everybody, so then, so then, so then NBC sent all the visas in August and they started processing them in August. Now they're backlogged again, I think, because if they would just stay, if they would just keep, you know, keep receiving visas, stick them on a shelf somewhere and then process them as they get to them, you know, but that, that's common sense, right? Uh, so Lausanne Alashi, write the question again. I don't see it. Write it again. Life is just for living. I'm in Jamaica, so excited. I don't remember what the next step is, but I'm going to do the DS-160 tonight. Okay. If you're in ready status, then you should be able to do that. Teja Sweeney, can we go in India? Can we go inside to the interview? Mumbai. Uh, I think you can in Mumbai. Yes. Bangkok, Thailand, no. Indonesia, yes. Philippines, Manila, no. London, I can't remember. Uh, Colombia, Bogota, yes. Teja Sweeney, how do we submit the DS-160 to the embassy before the interview? If you got ready status, that's when you do it. Got to have ready. The embassy's got to be ready for you. Lausanne, Alashi. My NOA-1 is September 21st, 2022. I am checking the status 100 times a day. You're going to get a headache. And cases after me are getting approved. Same for me. Is there something wrong with my case? No. Nothing wrong with your case. Could it be because I applied for citizenship for my parent in the past? No. It's got nothing to do with it. Immigration are not processing visas in order they receive them. 
all these range numbers and all this other stuff, the MVC timelines, the USIS timelines, it's all administrative gobbledygook, okay? Immigration is processing visas on immigration time in order that immigration feels like processing them. You know, it took me 13 months just to get on an NOA2 letter. While other people were getting their NOA1s before I, NOA2s before I was, I didn't worry about it. I mean, that's the way the process is. Now, the, now I'm on my second K-1 visa, so, you know, that could be a reason for me. But probably not. It's just immigration is immigration. Uh, Jeff Mantock. Hello, Diego. What's going on, Jeff? And life is just for living. Diego, you are the K-1 visa encyclopedia. Accurate and updated. Thanks, Diego. You're welcome. There's not much I don't know about the K-1 visa process. And I try to help you guys and try to share the knowledge with you so you don't have to pay an immigration attorney. Save that money for your wedding. Now, I'm not an immigration attorney. I don't work for USCIS. I don't work for the State Department. I give you zero immigration advice, okay? But I've been through two K-1 visas and a spousal visa. So I know how to do this process, like the back of my hand. I dream about NVC, USCIS. I, I, I dream about it. And then I wake up with all these good ideas for new videos. Uh, Teja Sweeney, what is the problem with the spouse visa, Diego? There's no problem with a spouse visa. It's, it's, it's another kind of visa. I just don't like it because with a spousal visa, when the visa gets to the National Visa Center, everything stops. You have to stop everything that you're doing, and you got to upload passport pictures, birth certificates, police certificates, letters of intent to get married, bank statements, civil documents. You have to upload them to the National Visa Center in a specific group, in a specific line. And then you got to wait for somebody at the NVC to look at it and approve it and then say, okay, this one's good, this one's good, this one, ah, there's a problem with this one. And they send you an email and say, oh, you didn't upload this, this birth certificate properly. It's off a little bit to the left. Send it again. And then you got to wait three months for them to look at your case. It's a, it's a, a spousal visa for me is a nightmare, okay? I don't recommend it. With a K-1 visa, when it gets to the MVC, all they do is assign a case number when the embassy gets freed up. That's all they do. They see the embassy gets freed up, they assign a case number, and they mail it to the embassy. You don't have to upload anything. It's quick. It's quick. You know? <clears throat> so no, there's nothing wrong with a spousal visa if you don't mind going through the big nightmare at the National Visa Center. Personally, I'm sick of the National Visa Center. I've had it up to here with the National Visa Center. Uh, let's see. Mm, Asmara LLC. Now, Asmara, I remember Asmara is the name of a town, right? And your company, you have a trucking company. You have good news. Asmara, I received welcome letter in two months. Look at you. High five. That's good. Lausanne Alashi, it's very frustrating, Diego. I am super stressed because of the process. Don't stress. I'm overthinking and being a family medicine uh, resident with exams and studying. You're in family medicine. It's even harder. I just want to concentrate. Concentrate on what you got to do. The immigration process is going to proceed, okay? It's going to proceed. It's going to get, you're going to get through it. Don't stress. I've been waiting 111 days since my NOA2 letter. And then somebody sends me a message telling me the embassy in Bogota is closed because of COVID. You know, you can't make this stuff up, guys, but you can't stress it, okay? Be proactive. The first thing I did was I emailed the embassy in Bogota and said, hey, what's up, guys? Why are you closed for COVID? And I sent a picture of the screenshot of this letter the NVC sent out. Lausanne, focus on your schoolwork, okay? Look on your family medicine residence, residency. You'll get through this. Tina, for the embassy interview, do they provide interpreters? No. You have to get the interpreter. Lausanne, my other life aspects. Lausanne, hang in there, okay? Focus on family medicine. The visa will take care of itself. Just relax. Here come Adarid for 2023 files. Is it faster than 2022? Apparently not right now. Not at the NVC. 
at USCIS, it's going pretty quick. At the MVC, it's that everything's slowing down. Okay, and now the MVC is making up stories. Um, Tejo Sweeney, this is very stressful. No, don't stress it. Julio Borbo or Julio, Julio Borbo. Hello, hello, guys. Diego, my case was approved. NOA 1, August 29th, 2022. NOA 2, September 13th. Well, that's today. Congratulations. You are a September 13th superstar, Julio. Julio, excuse me. You got it done. Now you just got to wait for the NVC to do their part and get you the case number and get it in the mail to the embassy. <clears throat> Julio, which country? Remind me. Teja Sweeney, how long does it take to process the spousal visa and get the spousal visa? The same amount of time as the K-1 visa. 18 months, 20 months, okay? There's no difference in time. It could be longer. The spousal visa could be longer if you mess up at the MVC. If you, if you don't upload the documents perfectly as they want in a specific order at the National Visa Center in a spousal visa, they'll stop processing your visa until you fix it. You know, I mean, if you want to do spousal visas, that's up to you. But I will never do one, ever again will I do a spousal visa, never. Bud Garcia, hi, hello, Diego. Is there any updates for Thailand? Yeah, Thailand is processing visas, okay? They're processing K-1 visas. You just can't take your sponsor to the visa interview. Julio, El Salvador, that's right, Central America. Haja Elban, hi Diego, my NOA one is the 28th of September, 2022. Still waiting? Okay, well, you should be hearing anytime soon, probably probably the first week of October. Hickam, for USCIS, it, it says 16.5 months. Is that really true? No, don't even look at that because I am seeing less than 13 months to get approved. It's getting done in 11, 12, 13 months, not 16 and a half months. The immigration put 16.5 months there to stop people from calling because people keep calling and calling and calling and it slows down the process. It slows it all down. When they're on the phone talking, they're not processing visas. So they put it way out there so you can't call. You know, I'm talking USCIS, not the NBC. Life is just for living. My friend is doing the spousal visa and she's over 24 months. What did I tell you? Now documentarily qualified, that's at the NBC, and has been waiting three months without an interview. Yeah, the spousal visa is a nightmare. Don't do it. You got to get documentary qualified first at the NVC, and that could take six months. Then you got to wait for a visa interview, and the NVC schedules the visa interview for a spousal visa, not the K-1 visa. It's, it's treated automatically as an immigrant visa. So the NVC schedules the interview for a spousal visa, but it's a don't, I don't I'll never do it again. Teja Sweeney, in case this visa does not work out, can my fiance apply for a visiting visa? And when we both come to the USA, we can get married, and then we can work on visiting visa. Okay, Teja Sweeney, you don't get a tourist visa and come to the USA and get married. That's visa fraud. You don't do that. That's a big problem. Don't, that will cause, if that will be a big problem for you. But your visa is going to get approved, okay? So quit thinking negatively and just relax. And focus on your K-1 visa, okay? This You're going to get your K-1 visa. It's not going to be denied as long as you qualify for the benefit and everything's good, okay? But you don't come to the United States on a tourist visa and get married. That's a big no-no. Haja Elbin, that's weird. My friend did spousal visa two years, and she got approved only in five months. Well, that, how long ago was that? <clears throat> Julio, Diego, do you have any info about U.S. Embassy in El Salvador for visa interviews? It's two to four months, so about eight weeks it takes to get a visa interview in El Salvador. But they're processing K-1 visas. They're doing it. They're on it. Okay? Central America, beautiful part of the world. I've been to Honduras. I've been to El Salvador. I've been to uh, Panama. Um, haven't been to Nicaragua. And I don't plan on going to visit there. 
and that's ran by communists. I don't want to go there till it's a free country. Uh, Ted Sweeney, do you know how long it takes to get an interview for India? Eight weeks to 12 weeks. Y05. Hi, Diego. Hi, what's going on, Y05? How is your beneficiary? How's your fiance? Is she holding up in Venezuela? Any news on her passport yet? How's she doing on the passport? Uh, here come Adarjid. I heard Algeria is very fast for the NVC. It says 27 days. Algeria is pretty fast. It's pretty rapid. Yeah, they're fast. Algeria is in uh, North Northwest Africa, right? Amina Chaudhry, is there updates for Pakistan? Pakistan's processing K-1 visas. Islamabad are doing their job. They're on it. Asmara, how long does it take for interview in Ethiopia? Ethiopia is about two months. Now, they're processing visas, okay? But they're also taking visas, like Egypt is getting a busy right now because they're now taking the visas from Sudan and from Niger and from those countries that are fighting each other. Folks in the Sudan now go to Egypt to get their K-1 visas processed. Gabriel, Gabriel Rodriguez, why isn't the MVC sending K-1 visas to Bogota? Now, people are saying that the embassy is closed because of COVID. Now, we went through this before back in August. The embassy did not, did not close because of COVID in August or in, in July, excuse me. They got busy. So they asked the MVC, please hold off on sending visas in July because we're busy. Let's catch up on these visas. So the MVC held off on sending visas to the embassy in Bogota in July. Because of the biz, because they were so overwhelmed with K1s. The MVC was telling, was sending out emails saying the embassy was closed because of COVID, which is not true. It was a lie. Okay. And I and I put them and I and I put them to the test on that. We only live 20 minutes from the embassy in Bogota. Karina's 20 minutes down the road. She's gonna be calling them tomorrow. I already sent them an email to get find out what's going on in uh, Bogota. So let's see here. <clears throat> Make sure I don't miss anybody. So yeah, they're doing, they're, they're processing visas. Uh, let me see. Kingsley Gordon, evening Diego. Go, what's going on, King, uh, Kingsley? Our K-1 was approved and it is at the NVC. How long before it's sent to Taiwan? Oh, Taiwan. Okay. Do we just wait for the next step? Well, you can do a, you can do a, if you have a case number, you can do the, you can do a status check and uh, do MV, Google National Visa Center, punch in your, your case number and do a ch status check, see where it's at. You're going to be waiting for the, re for the ready status. Uh, let's see. Tejas Sweeney, wow, for, for approval, we waited a year, then MVC, we waited three months, and then for interview, two to three months. This is a lot. This, it's the process. It's horrible, isn't it? It's a horrible process. It's borderline inhumane, in my opinion. Tess and Rocco, hi, Diego and Karina. Hope soon you can get the welcome letter. We're waiting. I'm still waiting the welcome letter. I got NBC, the case number for Manila. I inquired NBC, says still not in transit. Well, just keep looking, Tess and Rocco. You're going to be in transit pretty soon. Cheshire Sweeney, I was wondering in other offices, why does it only show that for a K-1 visa? It only takes five months for the whole process. Cheshire Sweeney, there is not one office in the whole world that's going to process a K-1 visa in five months. No matter what it says, it's not going to happen. Uh, Lausanne, I'm doing my residency in Texas and my fiance is in Jordan. Well, that's great. Texas is a free state, no income tax, big wide open spaces, low property taxes, lots of beautiful homes, lots of bakerage. It's a big place. Texas is the second largest state in the union. Alaska is the biggest state in our union, and Texas is the second biggest state. So you guys got to hang in there during this visa process. I know it's not easy, okay? It's a difficult thing to do. Uh, Lausanne, I just... It's just a waste of years being away from my partner. Yeah, you're right. 
waiting for the visa instead of being together, spending time, starting a family. You are right. Perhaps USCIS and the U.S. government put this process in place for that very reason, you know, to create unbelievable pain on the human spirit and to see who breaks and to see who throws in the towel, to see who quits. That's what I think it is. I think immigration are trying to see who's going to quit, who's going to throw in the towel, who can't handle it. Just be strong. Don't let immigration win. You win. Haja Elbin, did you get your welcome letter? No, not yet, but immigration is not going to get under my skin. They're going to send it. Bud Garcia, what is the time to get an interview in Thailand? About two, it's about eight weeks, or is it the same? Yeah, six to eight weeks. No, that's correct, Bud Garcia. You got it right. You're good. The only thing is you cannot, your, the sponsor cannot go to the visa interview with, the, uh, with your beneficiary in Thailand. You can you now she can bring in an interpreter, but that but she has to find the interpreter. Okay? But you can't go. Uh, let me see here. Nash Ose Yeba. Yeboha. Hi Diego and Karina. Greetings from Ghana. Very nice. My fiance and I have fiance and I have been waiting for the embassy to open appointment for almost one month, two weeks. Still waiting for open slots. Keep looking. Don't give up. This is a test. This is a test of your mental strength, and you're going to win. Uh, Tina, what do we do? What do we have to do if we get a new job after submitting the K-1 petition? Well, when you when you fill out, are you talking about the petitioner or the sponsor? If Are you talking the sponsor got a new job or the petitioner got a new job? If the petitioner got a new job, there's nothing, to, there's nothing you have to do. No, it's not important. But if the sponsor got a new job, the petitioner, no, it's irrelevant. Immigration don't care what the petitioner is doing, working, not working. They don't care. All they care about is what the sponsor is doing. Is the sponsor working? Is the sponsor making enough money to support the beneficiary when he or she comes to the USA? Okay. So when you fill out the I-134, that is the sponsor filling out the I-134. To bring the petitioner to the USA, the petitioner, the petitioner, the sponsor is is the person that needs to be gainfully employed. The petitioner doesn't matter. You could take the rest of the year off if you're the petitioner and relax on the beach and wait for your K-1 visa if you want to. Teja Sweeney, a person I know said that once she receives her visa, she will get married and not register her marriage. They are in our home country. But once, but once she comes here, they will register their marriage here. Okay. Teja Sweeney, if, if somebody is getting married in your country on a K-1 visa, the K-1 visa is null and void. All right? A K-1 visa is a fiancé visa. It means that both people are legally free and able to marry each other. So you stay single. Come to the USA, get married within 90 days. Don't break immigration laws. Don't lie to immigration. Don't make up stories. Don't do any of that. Uh, will they find out? Probably yes. Immigration will find out. Y05, we have three and a half months since we played, but since we paid $250. She's hoping by the end of this month, but you said at least six months is the wait. Okay, so that's two hundred. So she paid two hundred and fifty dollars for the for the Venezuelan passport. That's correct. It takes about six months to get a Venezuelan passport. The communist government of Venezuela, okay, don't like their citizens getting passports. So they make the wait long and they make the price high because they want to contain the citizens of Venezuela in Venezuela. Okay, but don't worry, she'll get her passport. What I would do, Y O five, is email. Is have your beneficiary, your fiance, have her email the passport office in Caracas and ask for a follow up and ask for status. What's the status on my passport? I got a vacation. I'm trying to plan a vacation. I want to go to Cuba for vacation. Okay, don't say Mexico, say Cuba. Cuba and Venezuela are best buddies. Communist Cuba and communist Venezuela are like best buddies. 
So have Y05, have your fiance email the passport office in Caracas, Venezuela, and say, hey guys, I'm trying to plan my vacation to communist Cuba and go visit some of my friends. Can you hurry up with the process? And then they'll go, oh, okay, Cuba, okay, no problem. They might speed it up. Uh, let me see. Haja Elbin, Diego, my fiance just lost his job while we were waiting to get our NOA too. And he's going to have a few interviews next week. Does this affect our visa? Only it will only affect the visa if the, if your fiance is the sponsor and the sponsor cannot find a job, then you will need a joint sponsor if the income does not meet the requirements. So if the person that lost his job is the sponsor and cannot find a job, he needs to be looking for a job and a joint sponsor to cover yourself at the visa interview. Uh, K Messenger, greetings from Thalaxla, Sakala, Saxcala, Mexico. Hope you and Queen are doing well. Hey, K Messenger, we're rocking and rolling. We are great. Lausanne, Alashi, yes, you are right, Diego. I guess I just wanted some motivation. Let's, Lausanne, you're going to be a doctor, okay? You're going to be helping people. You're going to be a doctor. Focus on your studies. Let the immigration process focus on itself, and you'll get through it. Okay, uh, and you said thank you for your time and videos that help us a little bit. Well, I hope I help you a little bit. Y05, Diego, would you happen to have the link to email them? I don't, but Karina probably does. She knows how to, she'll, Karina can contact her friend in Venezuela and find out. So I'll ask Karina. Karina's watching the video, but she probably doesn't understand what I'm saying because she doesn't speak English. But I'll ask her tonight in Spanish. For the link for the uh, for the passport office in Caracas, Venezuela, for you Y05, and I'll get it to you for the at the next live stream. Uh, K Messenger about how long is the current wait for the Mexico City for a K1 visa interview? Thank you again for your efforts. I don't know. I think it's like three months for Mexico City. There, Mexico's not going as fast as I would want them to go. Mexico is not going fast. What's interesting is the Philippines are going really fast. They're processing visas quickly. And that's a and, and they got lots, they're the number one, that's the number one visa processing hub in the world. The Philippines process the most K-1 visas in any other country in the world. And they're processing visas fast. So I don't know. Mexico, there's I think they're like third or second busiest. Uh Teja Sweeney, thank you so much for the information, Diego. You're good. I appreciate it. Teja Sweeney, don't break immigration rules. If you're in a K-1 visa, wait out the process. If you're in a spousal visa, wait out the process. Don't circumnavigate the rules. Don't come to the USA on a B-2 tourist visa, get married, and expect to get a green card. You're throwing lucky dice in the air. Hitchum Adjurid, will the processing times be like they were pre-COVID? Ever. I don't, I, in my own, you know, honestly, honesty, I don't think so. I think it's going to be a long process. I think this process is being done deliberately. I think it's a deliberate uh, stoppage. I mean, I believe the U.S. government is deliberately slowing down the process, making it go a year, year and a half, okay, to see if they can break people and quit and, and to, to separate the real visas from the fraud visas. My opinion, if you are in a real relationship and you are in a real, you know, uh, non-fraudulent relationship, you're going to stick it out through the whole process. You'll stick it out. But if you are in a fraud relationship, okay, then that person in that country may get just seriously uh, tired of waiting and just say, I'm done. I think it's a deliberate, a deliberate process put in place. Plus, they do two security checks now, not one. Two immigration officers go over your visa package, not one. It used to be just one person. Now two people have to review it, which slows it up. Uh, Ashley Santana, NOA 1 6 6 2022, NOA 2 6 12 2022, Embassy welcome email September 12th, scheduled interview September 27th. Hey, look at you. It's good, Ashley. Good job. James Van Scoda. 
I just got the welcome letter for Vietnam. Okay. Uh, do I need to do an I-134 for the interview? James Vascoda, if you are the sponsor of this person, your beautiful Prometida, you need to fill out an I-134 and sign it and date it and get it to her for the visa interview, the original. So you need to fill out the I-134, you got to sign it and date it, and you got to send it to her via DHL or FedEx, plus your tax returns, tax transcripts, 1040s, financial documents, bank statements, W-2s, 1099s. Letter from your boss, your employment letter, or HR. Uh, you gotta, you gotta get proactive on this. Okay, James, Teja Sweeney. Why, why does it take so long for this process? And for students, it takes a month. The U.S. government is slowing this down deliberately to try to break people because real K-1 visa applicants, the people that really are truly in a real relationship, trying to get reunited with their loved ones, will not quit the process. But there's, there are some people who are doing the fraudulent visa. After a year, they're going to say, I'm sick of this, and they're going to throw in the towel. The U.S. government is just trying to break you, okay? Plus, they're doing extra security checks. Uh, life is just for living. I always say it's a test of the relationship for true TA, Diego. This is a test. The U.S. government is trying to see if they can break you into breaking up with your fiance. My opinion, you know, my first K-1 visa, I processed the whole thing in nine months in 2016. This, this process is absolutely insane. But there's a reason behind their madness, and they're trying to break your spirit, break you mentally, break you emotionally to see if you stick with the, with the visa. Uh, Seek Zion. Hi, Diego. Quick question. Will they deny my via fiance visa at the interview if she is six months pregnant? No, they won't. Not at all. Being pregnant will not stop you from getting the K-1 visa. Congratulations. Six months. The only issue I see is the airlines may not let her get on a plane at six months plus. So if she goes to the visa interview six months pregnant and then she's seven months pregnant, you buy a plane ticket for her to come to the United States. The airline companies may not let her get on the plane. They may, may You may have to wait until the baby's born. Then you register the birth at the embassy. Because the baby becomes a U.S. citizen. You get the baby a passport, and then you fly after the baby's born. Then you got two tickets to buy, pay for, not one. P.P., well, look at you, Mountain Dew. Stittos to Diego. Thank you, P.P., for the Mountain Dew Super Chat. You are a great patriot. Thank you, PB. Uh, Teja Sweeney, why so much checking when they can send the person back if the relationship is not genuine? Teja Sweeney, I don't know why the U.S. government does the things they do. I don't agree with it all, but I comply with it. We are within compliance. Stay within compliance of what they want, and you'll get your visa. Do as they ask, you'll get your visa. Don't give up. Don't quit. Don't throw in the towel. Don't let them break you. Don't get anxiety. Don't get sick. Don't be mentally drained. Don't let them do that to you. Your relationship is real. Boom. Stick with the process. You'll get your visa. If you have to go get on a plane and go visit your beneficiary, go get on a plane. Go spend a vacation with them. Uh, Y05, thank you, Diego, for the information. I will try not to miss your next live stream, but I'll let my fiance know what you said. Yeah, Y05, uh, your fiance probably knows the link, the where to con who to contact for the passport in Caracas, Venezuela. But if she doesn't know, I'll find out. Frank, next up, next, Gaxo. Diego, how can my fiance get a job after our marriage? Can we get a working permit? Sure. How long does it take? Well, you, you can apply for an EAD, which is a, it's basically uh, an employment authorization document, EAD. When you adjust the status for the green card, you fill out an EAD paperwork. You fill out that, include it in the adjustment status, and then you wait for your work permit. Then she can work. Then you wait for the green card. It's an easy process, and there's no cost for the EAD. Uh, and how long does it take? 
it could take three or four months. And then right after that, the, the green card will come to you, probably a few months after that. Ashley, sorry, date's wrong. NOA 16622, NOA 261223. Okay, embassy email in Santo Domingo, 91223. Scheduled the interview for September 27th, 2023. Great job, Ashley. <coughs> Larry Albright. Hi, Diego. Got the I-797 from USCIS on 623-23 and got the email from the NBC today saying the petition has been forwarded to the U.S. Embassy in Bangkok, Thailand. Woohoo! Good job. So you got you, your next mission is to fill out the DS-160 or help your beneficiary fill out the DS-160, pay the visa fee, get the medical exam done, get the documents together, get the police certificates together. Get the birth certificates together, okay? Get all that do, get all that document documentation ready. And Pete B, thanks thanks for that super chat. That is Mountain Dew time. Sasha Lee, hi Diego. I received my case and invoice number today, thirty six days from approval. Sasha Lee, that's pretty darn quick. You get the fastest. You get the award for the fastest NOA two to NBC processing letter. That's fantastic. Sig Zion, thank you. No problem. Now, now, I just gave you some good information there, Sig Zion, about your beneficiary. Being pregnant is fine. Six months, one month, nine months. It's no problem to immigration. Okay? And you don't need a K-2 visa for the baby. The baby's American citizen. You've got to register the birth at the embassy, get the baby get the baby a, a passport, so your, your beneficiary will have her K-1 visa. The baby will have the, the, the U.S. passport. And you rock and roll and you get on the plane. you got to buy two plane tickets now. That's if the airlines don't let her fly because she's so far along. Wing, hey, if I, uh, hey, if I travel to a country to meet her while our K-1 visa is processing, you think it will be fine? Sure. Do it, Wing. Get on the plane. Go visit. You can do that. Y05, I'll ask her right now. Good job. Uh, Archor M. Now, Archor, you're in uh, Algeria, right? You live in Algeria. Hello, Mr. Diego. What's going on, Archer M? Les F. Hi, Diego. I filed another I-129 before the two-year limit. I filed another I-129 before the two-year limit. They want me to give them a reason why is this a big deal. Les F. I filed another I-129F before the two-year limit. I don't understand the question. Did you? Is this your second K-1 visa? Is this what you're telling me? You're filing, this is your second K-1 visa. Is that what you're doing? You filed a, one K, you filed a K-1 visa in the past. I, I don't understand the question. Be more specific so I understand. Ashley, does anyone know if my baby is allowed to interview in Santo Domingo? Uh, Ashley, you got to bring your children to the interview. If you have a baby or a the, the, you bring the baby, you bring the child to the interview. Our choice, and yes, our choice in Algeria, beautiful Algeria, North Africa. Life in North Carolina. My Manila fiance made an embassy interview for November 14th online, but has found out she will not make that day because she wants to get her medical results till December 4th. Reschedule or cancel? I would reschedule it. Reschedule it. Past December 4th. James Van Skoda, do we have to wait for the embassy to send a letter to my fiance to schedule the medical? No. If you have ready status, she needs to get the medical exam scheduled. Okay, get it scheduled. But you gotta you gotta bring the, the welcome letter, you gotta bring the NOA2 letter, you gotta bring uh I would do the DS-160, bring the confirmation page of the DS-160. I would do that. Uh, bring some passport photos, bring the passport. Uh, bring all that documentation for, for the medical exam. Uh, yes, second. Les F, yes, second. Second what? So Les F, this is your second K-1 visa. Now, you understand, when you file a K-1 visa, if it doesn't, if it doesn't work out, Okay, I filed a K-1 visa in 2016. It didn't work out. Okay, okay, didn't work out. Life goes on, right? You have to wait two years 
24 months before you can file the visa for a second K-1 visa. You got to wait two years. So my first K-1 visa I applied for was in 2016. Okay. Didn't work out. Boo-hoo. No big deal, right? Be a vic Don't be a victim. Be a victor. Didn't work out. I filed my second K-1 visa in 2022. So from so my first K-1 visa was approved 2016. So 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Seven years later, I applied for my second one. So two years have passed. Okay. So if you file for a second K-1 visa within two without after the, the within two years of the first one being not working out, immigration is going to ask you questions. It may be a problem, it may not. You gotta you gotta explain it. But I believe that congressional law requires you wait two years before you file a second one. Uh, Ashley, my baby is American. Your baby is American, and then the baby doesn't need to go to the U.S. Embassy interview. The baby has a passport, a U.S. passport, doesn't need a visa, doesn't need a visa interview. Not necessary. Does not need to go to the interview. Sasha Lee, what do I do next after receiving my case number? What I would do is I would do a, a uh, I would go into the National Visa Center uh, inquiry and check the status and see where it's at. Is it in transit? Is it in ready status? That's what I would do. Uh, Wing, is there anything I should do after I get the NOA letters? How do you mean anything you should do after the NOA 2 letter? You got to wait for the National Visa Center to contact you. That's what you have to do. You got to wait for the NBC. You got to wait for them to, to give you a case number. That's the next step. Sasha Lee, because uh, I still don't get my NOA 2 letter in the mail. You need your NOA 2 letter. Contact uh, USCIS, send them an email and ask them, where's my NOA 2 letter? Hit them. My NOA 1 letter is February 2023. So you are saying the NOA 2 will be around January 2024. I'm saying it will probably be around uh, December 2023, January 2024. Yes. December 2023 would be good, would be better this year, right? Uh, October 1st is when the national is when the US government gets funded hopefully hopefully we get hopefully they get funded and that's when their that's when their uh, their their basic their year starts for for their calendar uh, head soon my anyway one letter yeah January 2024 I would say December 2023 January 2024 is when you should get your NOA 2 letter Next, the next step will be the National Visa Center. I don't know how long that's going to take. Sasha Lee, it's at the NVC. I received my case number today. High five, Sasha Lee. Good job. That's good. Uh, Ashley Santana, all along I thought about taking the baby because I figured it would help during the interview, but now I'm thinking about the hassle of traveling with the baby. You don't have to bring Ashley. You don't have to try to impress the immigration officer with your baby, okay? You tell the immigration officer, my baby is a U.S. citizen, and I'm and she's staying at home, so I don't have to. So she doesn't have to be dragged through all this traveling. She's at home with family. Immigration officer, respect that. You're good. Wing, I was rejected for my K-1 petition, but I was not told, but I was not told to wait a year. Wing, I was wet, rejected from my K-1 petition. So your first K-1 petition was, was denied. Why? What happened? What was the reason? Bud Garcia, do you think things will speed up after October? At USCIS, yes. At NBC, no. Uh, Sasha Lee, I already did that two times. No reply. Okay. Print those email communications that you sent. Les F, yes, the two years didn't pass. The first I-129F got accepted, and I immediately filed another one. They want me to file a waiver with my reason I withdrew the first one. Then you, they're not. That's what they're giving you a big break, man. Les F, they're giving you a massive break because under congressional law, you, you normally have to wait two years. So they're telling you to, to file. That they're going to give you a waiver. But you got to explain the reason why you withdrew the first K-1 visa. When I filed my K-1 visa for Karina, my beautiful Prometea, I wrote a letter of explanation 
as to what happened on my first K-1 visa in 2016. Was I, was, did I have to do that? No. It wasn't required because seven years has gone by. But I did it as a courtesy to the U.S. to the U.S. immigration officer. I wrote a letter saying this was this is my NOA one letter. This is my NOA two letter. This is my uh, 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 welcome letter. This is my blah 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 from my first K one visa, back, dated back 2016. I said this work this didn't work out, didn't work out, and then and then behind that I put my divorce decree from her. Okay. I explained it all. She didn't like the weather. She didn't like the food. She didn't want to learn how to drive. She didn't like Florida. She was scared of hurricanes. I wrote an explanation, page and a half, of what happened. So there was absolutely no question in the minds of the immigration officer that that first K-1 visa was done in good faith. It didn't work out. She went home. We got divorced, and it's over. And I saved myself probably two months of processing time with immigration. I didn't get an RFE. They didn't send me an RFE with an ex for an explanation. None of that. It was already included in my K-1 visa package. So my advice to folks out there, if you've already filed a K-1 visa in the past and it didn't work out, okay, no big deal. You're, you're allowed to have two. Congressional law, Ember law says you can have two. Two's the maximum, okay? This is my second one. And if you write a letter of explanation and include any documentation from the last K-1 visa that didn't work out in your K-1 visa, in your second K-1 visa package, immigration won't have to give you an RFE and request that information. They already have it. Trust me, guys. I've been there, done that. Uh, so write a letter of why you withdrew the first one, Les, and you'll be good. Uh, hit them. Uh, I, if I get my NOA 2 in January 2024, when will the interview be? This is in Algeria. Well, I would say three months at the NVC, January, so let's say March, April, May, probably by May or June of next summer for the Algeria. Uh, K Messenger, if the government shuts down in October, does all the processing pours. USCIS will continue to process K-1 visas. NVC will continue to, to fit to process visas, but the embassies may close. The U.S. embassies are are ran by the State Department, which gets its funding from the Congress, which gets its money, which authorizes uh, the, the the allocations to spend money through the Treasury Department. Okay, the U.S. Treasury Department is controlled by the Congress. If the Congress shuts down the government, the money cuts off, the money supply stops which means the embassies will not have money to operate. So the issue will be at the embassies, not at USCIS. So if you've got a, if you've got a visa at USCIS, then, you know, then there's no problem. But if you, have a, if you have your visa at the embassy and you're waiting for a schedule and interview, then there could be a shutdown there. But it's highly unlikely the government's going to shut down. You know, this... It's not going to happen. The worst case scenario, it, what I think is going to happen is that uh, the Speaker of the House, Kevin McCarthy, will will file a uh, continuing resolution to fund the government and to keep the government funded until they can figure out a budget. So don't worry about that. Uh, Wing, the check was not the correct amount. The, the, the check was not the correct amount. Bud Garcia, my NOA 1 was September 2022. When do you think I'll get my NOA 2? Uh, probably you should get it this month, September, 1 September, probably this month. Let's have, thanks, Diego, I'll send him a letter. Write a letter of explanation to immigration. Dates, times, what happened? Why you withdrew the visa? You know, why did you do that? You got to explain it, you know? And don't bash the person that you withdrew the visa from. Whether you like her or not, is you don't bash her, okay? You pay, you be respectful and say, it didn't work out, or whatever the reason was. And then be respectful, say, I, you know, this is what happened. You know, it was unfortunate. It didn't work out, and this is why I withdrew the visa. All right? Faris, would the U.S. Embassy close in Turkey or Abu Dhabi? What do you mean close? 
If the government shuts down, yeah. They they won't have any funding. They won't have any money to operate. But they're not going to they're going to get money. The the government's going to continue to operate. Uh, Ashley's medical exam in Santo Domingo, 285 bucks. Ooh. That's not too bad, I guess. It's, it's cheaper than Colombia. Y05, Diego, my fiance said that she doesn't have the information. I would greatly appreciate it if you would get us the information. I'll get it. Okay, no problem. Pete B, we are getting super excited now. Her medical is in September. Good. Interview October 3rd. That's just right around the corner. I just bought a refundable ticket for October 16th. Good deal. Juan Carlos Pada. Hi, Diego and Karina from... Armenia, Armenia, Colombia. Ah, Armenia, Colombia. Okay, very nice. Coffee region. See, it's what is that? The cafe, cafeteria, cafeteria, loga. Hope all is good. Still waiting on welcome letter after inquiries to NBC, who provided a case number, but no news since August 30th. So the NBC, know your visa, your beneficiaries in Colombia, and they gave you a case number. Now they're waiting on the embassy to get unbusy, okay? Now the National Visa Center is sending out all these bogus letters saying that the embassy is closed because they have COVID. It's not true. And Karina is going to call the embassy in Bogota tomorrow. We are right. We live right down the street from the embassy, you know. She could go down there in person and knock on the door. Hey, you guys closed because of COVID? No. We're going to find out. And I sent an email to the national, uh, excuse me, I sent an email to the U.S. Embassy in Bogota today myself, and I copied my friend Senator Rubio so he can be in the loop on what the NVC is doing. Uh, Hitchum, will NVC processing times improve? I don't know. Uh, it's a good question. I mean, unless I hire, they hire more people, they probably need to hire more people, you know, they're, the USCIS is doing a good job. They're knocking out K-1 visas. They, they're processing about 400 to 500 K-1 visas a day. That's a lot of work. USCIS at the service centers are processing 415 to 500 visas, K-1 visas a day. So that's why they're already working on Octobers. That's pretty quick. So they're doing a good job. Immigration's doing good. At, but the National Visa Center are having a bad day. They're slow. Uh, PB, it was around it was around three hundred and sixty dollars for the physical at St. Luke's in Manila. Okay, St. Luke's Extension Center, right? St. Luke's Hospital, the Extension Center, Extension. Savvy me, Diego. Have you received your welcome letter yet? No, we're still waiting, waiting and waiting and waiting. I sent another inquiry. I sent my first inquiry a week ago, and they sent me back an email saying, we'll notify you when your case is at the embassy. So I sent, that was a week ago. I sent them another inquiry today saying, hey, where's our visa? What's the status? We're at 110 days, 111 days past our NOA2 letter. What's going on? But what I think, what I think is the problem is that the embassy in Bogota is busy. I think they got basically backlog is what I think. Let's see if I'm right. Savvy me. What's taking so long? We are, we all would like to know that, right? We all have that same question. Frank Terrence did a high five wing. When did you mail your petition? When did I mail my petition? What did I, when did I mail my petition? Who, who's the question for? Claudia Razniak, hi Diego, I received my police certificate in the mail. Can I open it? Uh, like, like, take it out of the envelope, or do they open it during the interview? Which country? A police certificate you can open. Yeah, you can open it, sure. You can open a police certificate, but keep, but, uh, but keep the envelope with it, that it came in. Uh, Go P. Singh, hello, sir. My NOA one from the California Processing Center is April 2023. When should I expect an approval? Thank you. April 2024 is going to be probably the, the latest. March of 2024 will be the earliest. Claudia, Canada, Montreal Consulate. Okay. 
Canada, our friends right up the road, our Canadian friends. Now, Montreal, isn't that French? Isn't that city? Don't they all speak French in Montreal? I, I think they do. I don't know. Okay, guys, I've been talking for one hour. Oh, we got a good question here. Ab, Abdallahi Keita. Hi, Diego. Here is the response from the embassy. There are no appointments available at the moment. Please check back in a few days. Okay. Not there you go. You got to keep checking, guys. Don't let immigration beat you up. Don't let them drain you, mentally destroy you. Keep following the directions they send you, and you'll get your visa. Uh, Bud Garcia, when I go visit my fiance in October, would it be a good idea to get the police record and the birth certificate translated into English? Yes. Get it translated into English, definitely. Ashley, still don't know if my fiance need a police report from Puerto Rico, where he lived for two years. We did not provide it. Well, isn't Puerto Rico part like part of the United States as a, as a territory? They're not a state, but they're part of the U.S. You don't need a visa to travel between Puerto Rico and the United States. So you don't need a police. Why would you need a police certificate from Puerto Rico? You don't need a police certificate from Puerto Rico. You don't need one from Guam, the Marianas Islands, uh, you know, American Samoa. They're, they're, they're territories. They're not states. Life in North Carolina is talking to Pete. Be careful on your fiance's medical at St. Luke's in Manila because we got set back with going back for a second medical exam, which pushed our interview. For, yeah, that's good. That's a good point. Life in North Carolina, good information. Thanks for sharing that. Bona Jaldo, what's going on, Diego? We're good, man. We're hanging out here. In YouTube, we got all our friends from all around the world watching us right now. It appears the processing duration is improving. USIS, yes. NVC, no. Well, NVC also. In fact, the, I would have to backtrack and correct myself. I think the NVC is processing visas faster too. But some embassies are not open or they're backlogged. Okay, they're, The embassy is open, but they're backlogged. So those are the folks that are getting the long lay times, like myself. The embassy in Bogota is busy, so I'm waiting and waiting and waiting for the, for the welcome letter. Some people are getting their welcome letters like that. Uh, what's the turnaround after NOA 2 for Ethiopia? Well, about eight weeks, Ethiopia. It's about eight weeks. James Van Skoda, my paperwork is in transit, and it says that the interview was provided by NBC. How long will it take for them to tell me? Well, depends on how busy the embassy is. The embassy and the, and the NVC are working in coordination with you on your particular K-1. So it's all rest with how busy people are, how busy they are, okay? Some embassies are not as busy as others. Hey, Jim, you look tired. Get some rest. Thanks for the info. I'm not really tired. I'm basically, I'm not tired. Uh, I'm just frustrated today with it, with, uh, with the NVC sending out emails to people from Colombia with, with, with beneficiaries in Colombia saying the embassy is closed because of COVID when I know for a fact that it's not. So I'm not tired. I'm just frustrated up to here with the National Visa Center. Uh, Bud Garcia, do you know if Bangkok Embassy is busy? Yes, they're busy. Pete B, thanks, life in North Carolina. What was the reason they delayed your medical? Yeah, that's a good question, Pete B. You know, you guys should help each other in this process. Use this, use this channel for your own benefit, guys. You know, I'll put the channel together so you all can help each other, okay? If you, if you are in India, help help your fellow K-1 visa applicant from India. Kind of, you know, maybe you could friend each other on Facebook, etc. cetera. Uh, Chow Chow Records. Is there anything I can do to expedite my process? Got told my great-grandma didn't have a lot of time left, and she really wanted to meet my daughter and fiancé. It's been about 25 days since I got to the NBC. Well... To be honest with you, I don't think that will qualify for an expedite, okay? It's not really, it's not good, but it's not a medical emergency. But for, for, your, for your beneficiary, it's, it's just, 
something in your family. But there's no reason why you shouldn't try. You could you could request one. You know, you, you could request an expedite and put a reason in there, explain what's going on. Okay. Maybe you'll get lucky. Wing, frustrating and visas go hand in hand. Frustration. Well, here's the thing, you know. You got to be patient during this whole process, guys. Got to be patient. Got to be relaxed. You don't want to stress anything. Uh, you you want to you wanna try to keep in your mind that you're going to get the visa. You're going to get it. When is another question. But you're going to get it as long as you are qualified. Now, I've seen Morocco. The embassy in Morocco has been denying a lot of visas. Now, that's interesting. I've seen three visas get denied at the U.S. Embassy in Morocco. So I don't know whether I need to call my friends in Washington, D.C. and have them take a look at the immigration process in Morocco and see what's going on. Or it may be just that they plain didn't qualify for the visa. But I don't know. I'm going to keep an eye on Morocco. Snapbacks, Bratton, do you know if Italy embassy is busy? The Italian embassy in, I know where Italy is. I lived in Italy for six years, my friend. I lived in Sicily for three years, and I lived in Sardinia for three years, which is a part of Italy. Uh, then I don't know if they're busy or not. I haven't, I haven't seen, I've seen one K-1 visa get approved at the U.S. embassy. Uh, I believe it's in Rome. I, I believe there's an embassy in Rome and then one in, in Naples, Italy, if I remember. I'm just kind of winging it off the top of my head, but I don't know if they're busy. My guess is would, would be that every embassy is busy right now. Come on, guys. Do you have any questions for me on the process? Anything at all that you need to get off your chest right now while I'm here? Because the next, the next live stream is going to be, what's today, Wednesday? The next live stream is going to be Saturday. So you're going to have to wait a couple of days if you want more information. So give me your questions now. I'll keep talking. If not, I am going to go take the trash out. Tomorrow's Thursday is trash day. So i got to get my trash out in, in the street. And uh, let me see here. Wing. Okay. My fiance is from Russia. I would just move to her if there wasn't a war. Yeah, you don't want to go to Russia, my friend. You, that would be a bad idea. Okay, don't 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 even try to go there on vacation. Don't go there. But Garcia, is there any way to get a video for Thailand? I've made a video for Thailand, but I can make another one for you guys. This is your channel. If you want videos, give me some ideas for videos. I've got like a whole list. I'm gonna I'm gonna make some videos tomorrow. I got a bunch of requests for videos for I'm going to make tomorrow. Uh, Frank Terrence, can I apply for a B1, B2 visa after filing a K1? Sure. No problem. You can do that. Not a problem. There's no law that says you can't come to the United States on vacation if you're in the middle of a K1 visa. But you need to expect scrutiny at the visa interview for the B2 visa. The immigration officer is going to know that you're in a K-1 visa process from her computer, his computer. The immigration officer is going to know at the Border Patrol checkpoint in the USA if you're in a K-1 visa. Chow Chow Records, my fiancé was in the U.S. as a minor and left as a minor. Could that cause any inconvenience at her appointment? She's from Mexico. No. she's a, She was a kid. How can she control where she is when she's a kid? She has no control, right? She's a minor. Somebody else was in control of her location. As long as there's a letter of explanation, uh, have, I don't know if you filed your K-1 visa yet, but when you go to the visa interview, you got to have a, you need, they're going to ask the question, have you been in the United States before? Your beneficiary, even though she was a kid, she's going to have to put yes on the question. Have you been to the USA before? Yes. Then she's going to have to explain what happened. But because she was a minor, it won't affect your K-1 visa. Okay, wasn't her fault if she was here under other than uh, legal circumstances. Let's put it that way. It's not her fault. The kids that are in the United States illegally right now, it's not their fault. Honestly, it's the U.S. government because they haven't secured the border. It's not the kids' fault. 
If we had a secure border, they wouldn't be able to get in with their parents or whoever, right? If we had a secure border, but we don't. So it wasn't it wasn't your fiance's fault. Thomas Bassent, Diego, what is the recommended time frame to schedule a flight to meet my fiance after the NOA to notice? Well, you need to get the visa interview filed. You need to get the visa interview scheduled before you start talking about planes and airplanes. Once you got the visa interview scheduled, then you plan flights, not NOA two letters. Okay. All right, guys, I'm going to go make a sandwich. I got to take the trash out. It's trash day tomorrow. And thanks for spending time with me today on the uh, channel. Pete B, thanks for that super chat. Greatly appreciate it. Uh, I'll be back on Saturday uh, at 7 p.m. And Thomas says uh, to bring her from the Philippines to the U.S. Don't make any plans, Ter Thomas, until you have the visa interview scheduled. Frank gets the last word. I still have not received my divorce certificate from my home country. What do you recommend? You got to have it. I recommend you follow up with the, the government office that has it and get, and get it. You got to have it. Okay, guys, we will see you on Saturday.